Hey, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you're all doing very well today. Um, having a wonderful morning. Had a chance to go out on a big walk for a beautiful day. And I think we forget sometimes how much nature can really impact our wellness. So um, this is your uh, weekly reminder now to get outside, get some fresh air. I don't think it's too cold yet. I have heard some stories about up in Michigan and that area from clients that there was some snow but uh, that it was burning off early. So no excuses. Um, I'd love for you to get outside today, spend at least 10 or 15 minutes just walking um, and just enjoying nature, turn off all distractions because I did that today and it was just really refreshing um, and brought a lot of perspective to um, just how important that is to do on a regular basis. So um, welcome to everybody to today's training. Uh, for those that don't know me, let me put up my name badge here. Uh, my name is Jason J. Hamilton, and I'm a Chartered Retirement Planning Counselor and the admin of this group, Your Retirement Coach. So inside this group, every week, we're going to bring you trainings, tips, tricks, and really the essential knowledge you need to have so that you can retire with confidence. So I want to make sure everyone can hear me before I get too deep into this training. So if you can please give me uh, some sort of thumbs up or just say yes, that you can hear me and the sound's coming through, okay, that would be great. I'm going to log in right here to the group so that... I can monitor comments and answer any questions that may come up from today's training. So I know it stalls just a moment, but if you are near a keyboard and you can type something to let me know that you're here, I'd really appreciate that. Uh, I want to make sure we're all on the same page today and I'm not doing this training in vain. Okay, it looks like I got one thumbs up there. That's good Good news. Okay, perfect. So I see my lighting here. It looks a little bit dark. Turn this up just a little bit. All right, so hopefully that works out well. So again, my name is Jason Hamilton, um, and what I do essentially, I run a registered investment advisor here in Orange County, California, one exit away from Disneyland, and I help clients retire with confidence with a specialty in clients wanting to retire early. Um, retiring early, there's very specific challenges, especially pre-Medicare. If you're not going to be taking Social Security for a few years, there's a lot of income planning, health care planning, a lot of things that come into play. So that's what we really do. Um, but today, I want to talk about something I think is just a really good overview of the things that you should be thinking about, the things that you should be planning for, and really a perspective on how to think about going into retirement that, yes, financial is part of it, but there are some other things that I want to talk to you about today that I think will be really beneficial. So um, without further ado, let's jump into today's training. Let me turn this off and switch my screen over here. Let's see if we can see this. I'm going to make sure it comes up, and I'm going to add myself in the bottom left corner. So let's see. All right. Hello to everybody that's joining us today. I appreciate you if you're just tuning in. Um, today's training is going to be talking about the what we call the four L's of retirement planning and why you know they're important. So um, if you've never heard of a gentleman called Wade Pifow, or I think that's how you spell his name or pronounce his name, he's a retirement researcher, PhD, really smart guy. But um, I kind of borrowed the, this idea from him because I think it's a really great way to think about retirement. And when I explain things like this to clients or to folks that I'm speaking to, it seems to really help them put things in perspective on what's important to remember, what they should be thinking about, and overall creating a retirement that you love, not just something where you just wake up every day and don't go to work anymore and don't know what to do, right? Because I think that's the biggest uh, concern. I know some of you love playing golf. I know some of you love doing these other things and you think just leaving work is gonna be the best thing ever. But what I find is about six to nine months after the exit from work is taken, uh, there's boredom that sets in. Um, honestly, the days start going by, the months start going by, and before you know it, you know life just starts getting away from you. And in, in reality, um, there's so much you could be doing in retirement to really enjoy and maximize it. So we're gonna talk about some of that today. So um, the title of today's training is The Four L's of Retirement Planning and Why They Are Important. Okay, so without further ado, I'm gonna get into this training here. Um, as always, I must put out my disclaimers here. This is not training, or I should, I should say, this is not meant to be any sort of financial tax, personal advice. These are general concepts. I'm not advising you personally here on what to do with your money at this point, okay? So please don't take that as that, but I will give you some specific things you should be thinking about when it comes to retiring with confidence. So from a high level, you know, what are the four L's of retirement planning? These are the things that we're going to talk about today. Um, one is going to be your longevity goals, your lifestyle goals, your legacy goals, and your liquidity goals. Okay, we're going to dig into these things, but um, thinking about it in, in a really easy terminology like the four L's is a way to uh, just keep track of these things because I know there's a ton of things that are probably going through your mind. So 
let's jump into a little bit today. So I want to talk first about longevity goals. So longevity goals are essentially, you know, making sure that you can just afford to live in retirement and not worry running out of money. Uh, the way I see this is like, you know, this is sort of the baseline we have to overcome sometimes with clients is like, we want to talk about all these other great things. But in reality, until you know, financially, you are secure and in a good place for retirement, it's really hard to move past anything beyond that mentally, unless you just know you have three, four, five million dollars and you don't have a lot to worry about. Um, that's that, you know, for most people, though, that's not the case. And so longevity is really important. So longevity goals really, um, the way I see them, they center around you covering your basic expenses in retirement. So things like making sure you have housing taken care of. Some folks are going to have mortgages paid off. You know, they're going to um, not have to worry about this, but a lot of folks more and more now are going into retirement with a mortgage payment of some sort um, or a housing payment of some sort. Maybe you're renting. So we need to make sure that housing is covered. You need somewhere to live. You need somewhere to stay, right? So that's a very foundational um, aspect of, of planning for retirement. Healthcare. Okay. So healthcare, we've been talking more and more about in this group. If you're on Medicare, the most you're probably going to pay, you know, well, outside of normal expenses, you know, five to 800 a month, um, all in. But if you're trying to retire early before Medicare, then you could easily be facing expenses of $1,500 a month, $1,800 a month for a couple. But as I've mentioned in other trainings, I do have a healthcare consultant now on my team that is doing a wonderful job with our first subjects here. I'm going to share those results with you coming up shortly. But healthcare, you have to make sure that that's taken care of. You know, you have to make sure you have that covered. Um, and some of you are, are lucky enough to continue group coverage from a job or things like that. But the majority of folks are going to have to consider buying on the open exchange. And you want to make sure that you're maximizing um, any subsidies you can get and making sure that you keep that expense as low as possible, but not skimping on the coverage you need. You have to have the coverage you need. One big um, you know, surgery or just really a, even a minor surgery can be tens of thousands, if not over a hundred thousand dollars. So that's a great way to blow up a retirement nest egg. Um, there were some conversations in here over the last couple of weeks about, I'm thinking about risking it from 62 to 65 without healthcare. Bad, bad, bad idea. Okay. If you really can't afford healthcare and your income is low enough, there are subsidies that are available. There's also private plans that are available that can be very, very affordable that will allow you to have the coverage you need, but then also fit within your budget. Okay, so make sure we're doing a lot of research around this because this is an aspect that could hold you back from retiring six months or a year early if you don't do your planning properly. So I know some of you are just ready to leave work and healthcare expense is a big concern. This is something that could be manipulated and budgeted for in a way to where it fits within your, um, your needs and get the coverage that you want, okay? And then, of course, we need to cover the basic expenses like food, utilities, medications, and all that, right? So longevity is really the foundation of covering basic expenses. So if something like your Social Security plus a pension or whatever it may be can cover these things, so then any money you have saved over and above um, to cover uh, other expenses, that's a really good place to be. But this is the first kind of the first step that we really need to know that is our money going to last and are, are our income sources going to cover the basic needs that we have in retirement? So, um, you know, overall, I guess you can break this down to a simple statement talk, saying that can you simply maintain a basic level of financial independence without becoming a burden to others, right? So I know a lot of you have lovely friends and family that are more than willing to help you um, take care of yourself in retirement. But ideally, I think most of you would want to be confident and know that you have enough saved and put aside to not have to rely financially on other people uh, within reason just for basic expenses. That, that Having that first level of financial independence is really the foundation of, good, of retirement planning to make sure that you can do that before you leave work or before you make any other drastic choices like selling a business and things like that. Okay, so once we can get basic, uh, co basic lifestyle expenses covered, then I think the next thing to think about is your lifestyle goals, right? So what do you wanna do in retirement? What are the things that are important to you? <clears throat> How do you wanna live? Do you wanna play golf five days a week? Do you want to travel three, four, five times a year? Um, or do you simply, maybe just you want to buy an RV. That's more and more common and just travel the country. We have a beautiful country here. You can spend a lot of time exploring all the different states um, and traveling in an RV. So these are things that I see commonly that come up in, in retirement, but you got to plan for those. So the, the big question is, how do you want to live your life and maintain your desired overall standard of living in retirement? 
What do you want to have as a standard of living and retirement that you can do without worry? So those are your lifestyle goals. So travel and leisure. So the, you know, these are more along the lines of discretionary expenses, uh, discretionary expenses. So travel and leisure, um, self-improvement activities, you know, taking classes, um, taking um, uh, health, uh, you know, joining a health gym or something like that to take some classes to keep you physically active. If you're not going to work anymore um, and you don't have something, you know, like a daily walking routine or something like that, there's some wonderful courses that are offered by local gyms. Um, one called Silver Sneakers, I know is very popular, but you got to keep yourself healthy, not only physically, but also mentally, right? So maybe you want to take some classes. Maybe you want to, you know, finish up that degree or that master's degree that you never had time to do in pre-retirement. But um, planning for these things, uh, I think, are really important to make sure you have enough money and that, you know, leaving work early, for example, is not going to in inhibit some of these things that you want to do. Social engagement, clubs, parties you want to join. Um, different different things that you want to do to volunteer. You know, you want to make sure that if uh, you maybe have to give to an organization to be a part of it, you want to make sure you can afford that. Really important. And then uh, if it is important to you, helping others with financial needs, such as tuition for family members. Maybe you want to leave something in an education account for your kids or your grandkids so that they can complete the degree um, and things like that. So a lot of things around discretionary. This is sort of level two when it comes to planning your expenses. One, you want to make sure you're taken care of. And I do think it's very, very important that you take care of yourself first before you start focusing on giving to others. You need to make sure you're in a good place. Um, you do not want to sacrifice your retirement or put yourself in a bad place uh, before helping others. But over and above that, um, you know, helping others in the ways you weren't able to be helped along the way, it can be very rewarding in, in retirement. So um, what these goals require is really maximizing your spending power, okay? So um, these are things like tax-efficient withdrawal strategies. Drawing your money from your retirement accounts in the most tax-efficient way can easily allow you to have a few thousand dollars extra a year that you keep versus giving to the government, right? Um, the government you know, does their thing. We have to pay taxes. And in all honesty, I think seeing uh, paying taxes for the lifestyle we can have here in this country is a huge benefit we have over other countries. But... As a reminder, I don't want you to pay $1 more than you need to in taxes. So um, tax efficient withdrawal plans are really important to maximize your spending power. But at the end of the day, I want you to be able to uh, maintain your spending so that it can remain consistent and sustainable while allowing for accepted degree of risk. So what does that mean? The markets are going to fluctuate. They're going to go up and down over time, over your 20, 30, or 40 year period in retirement. So what I want to do is help you create a plan and that you can spend comfortably and that if your portfolio were to go down 5 or 10%, um, it wouldn't change anything in the way you need to spend. So here, something that I think a lot of folks forget about is there's something called a 4% rule where, you know, supposedly you can draw 4% of your portfolio and it'll last for 30 years consistently. I think it's okay, but I honestly believe that you should be revisit, revisiting your withdrawal strategy and how much you're going to withdraw on a year-to-year -year basis because there's many years where your portfolio may go up 10 or 15%. Well, in those years, you might be able to draw a little more the following year as long as you're staying within your guidelines. On the opposite side, you can't continue to draw 5, 6, 7% if you're only returning 2%. So if all your money is sitting in CDs or cash equivalents, and you're drawing five or six percent, but you're only making two, well, you're gonna be spending down. So you have to be really careful that you don't overspend and spend too much too early in retirement because that's a very big risk. So um, I would recommend you actually do some research on um, the, glide, the sliding glide path of equity investing in retirement where you can uh, really be a little bit more conservative early on in retirement and then take some more risk later when you need less spending and the likelihood of your money lasting increases by a significant percentage. So that's really important. Okay, um, these expenses, you know, like I mentioned, they may need to be scaled back at certain points in retirement. So uh, if you have three or four years where your portfolio is underperforming what you expected, you may have to scale some things back when it comes to your spending. Again, revisiting this on a year-to-year -year basis um, or maybe twice a year is really important, but you just can't keep spending at 5, 6, 7, or 8% like some of these financial gurus recommend if you're not making you know, three, at least 3 or 4% more than you're spending to keep up with inflation. So really important to, uh, to keep that in mind when you are creating your spending plan. So for these goals, something you may, you may have a sense of is that you may want to seek more upside growth potential 
um, at the risk of downside at a level that's beyond which is feasible with longevity goals. So um, what does that mean? I see so many folks thinking about retirement, they realize they don't have enough. So what they want to do is put their money in extra risky investments, even extreme things such as cryptocurrency or very volatile single stocks, because they think that um, by taking that risk and getting a higher return, they're going to put themselves at a in a better place for retirement. But in reality, that may not be the case. Um, Taking too much risk, especially early retirement, if your portfolio drops below a certain level and you keep spending from it, it can cause you a lot of risk on the back end when it comes to your longevity and your lifestyle goals. So um, you really want to make sure you're checking up on this and you're creating a portfolio and you're creating a a retirement income plan that can make sure you keep up with what you want to do without um, too much downside risk. Okay, so uh, legacy goals. So legacy goals, I think, are, these are, I think they should be primary, right? But a lot of times, folks that I'm speaking to, it's really hard to get into thinking about their legacy before they know that they're okay. And that's why I put this third, right? Um, Because you need to make sure you're in a good place and that your basic lifestyle can be taken care of. But then uh, legacy goals are really like, what do you want to do with the time you have and the talent you have? You know, and digging into legacy. So legacy goals typically relate to any financial impact you wish to leave on your family and community. So maybe you want to give some money to your church. Maybe you want to give some money to a local nonprofit. Uh, Maybe you want to leave some money to other family members. Um, Or maybe it's simply things that you want to leave behind. And it could be things like knowledge. And maybe you want to write a book with everything you know that you've learned in life that can can help others. Uh, Books are a wonderful thing to create. But again, they take time, resources, um, and um, sometimes you can't always leave work and, and work on a book at the same time. So really important to th- be thinking about this on your retirement planning. So such goals include leaving assets for subsequent generations or to charities in addition to contributing in other significant ways with your time and talent to impactful activities. So when considering leg- legacy goals, a popular theme is purpose, right? Um, What is going to be your purpose in once you don't have to work anymore and you have 20, 30 or 40 years to live and what do you want to do to to make make it your life goal and your legacy and your purpose? What do you want to leave behind of your time, talents and abilities? This this is a really important question and um, you know, this is not something you can really always just figure out in five minutes. This may take multiple hours of really thinking through and asking some deep questions of what you want in retirement from your wealth, from your assets, and with all the time that you have available to you. Um, And while the thought of leaving behind something may be at the forefront, meeting these goals while still living is also very prominent, right? Um, I want you to be able to do the things that you want to do that are most important to you. So some concepts that I discuss with clients um, that I think you should really consider exploring when it comes to all this free time you're going to have is what about an encore career, right? So what would you do if money wasn't an object and you didn't have to worry about getting paid for it? What sort of business would you create? What sort of job would you want to have? Encore careers can be a very fulfilling way to spend your retirement time because you may not have to earn that big salary you earned before retirement because you saved enough. And now you can do something that, yeah, it earns an income, which is great, but it's something that brings you a lot of joy or that helps you leave an impact on this world that people can remember you for for many, many years after you're gone. Another thing to think about is volunteer work. I talk to so many folks in this group and they're just such kind-hearted people and they really want to give back and they want to be, um, you know, they want to volunteer for organizations that are meaningful. So planning this out before you leave work is a great thing to do because you know exactly what you're going to do once you get, after you take a few vacations and get the time off and all the rest in that you need from leaving, finding organizations local to you that you can volunteer with are um, a really good idea to have those listed out before you make the leap into retirement. Uh, Something that I've benefited from and I think we all have at some point hopefully is mentoring. You know, Maybe you can mentor folks in your field um, or in something that's a passionate area for you and help them get better at what they're doing so that they can learn from you and not make the mistakes that you maybe made early on. I think mentoring is so important. And for those of you that have been in this group for a while, you know I mentor a lot of low-income families um, and teens in high school up in East LA, which is a very, very poor area of LA. About 95% of the children there are on the school lunch program. So these are very low-income folks. And mentoring uh, kids on how to think about things 
what are some ideas that they can do to, to break out of their situation is so important to um, giving back. I, I really believe in that. And then finally, charitable giving, right? Um, these are just some things that you really want to think through. You want, you want to make sure you're giving enough away to where you feel good about it and you can make an impact, but you don't want to over give and put yourself in a position to where you're going to be um, risking your longevity goals at the end of retirement. So before we get into liquidity goals, I want to see, I want to take a minute and see if there's any questions or comments. I'm going to look through the comments here that you guys have left. Um, not seeing any questions so far, but if you have any questions, you know, always just put them in the comments, okay? I'm happy to discuss them either during the training or also um, at the end. I'll, I usually have make time for questions. So if you have questions, go ahead and drop them down below. But while we're doing that, I want to talk about liquidity goals, okay? So liquidity goals are one of the most important, um, but it's really about maintaining additional assets that can be tapped quickly to provide funds for unexpected contingencies or emergencies, whatever it may be. So these assets, you know, you shouldn't mark, you mark them for any other goals. This is like, you, know, you can call it an emergency fund. You know, maybe it's three, six months or even a year of, you know, easily available um, assets, whether you keep it in cash or a money market fund or something very easy to get to if you needed it. Um, but these are things that fall outside of the retirement, of the planned retirement budget. So making sure you have uh, liquid funds available, which in all honesty, I'm seeing more and more folks, they have a lot of money they've saved in their retirement accounts, but they don't have a lot of money saved in their savings account or a checking account or maybe a high, earn to, high interest earning account that they can get to. So they're living so tight and they're putting all this money that's tax deferred away, which is great. But at the end of the day, you may need some cash quickly and it would really um, not be good if you had to, anytime you needed money, you have to make sure you're planning for taxes and all these different things. So keeping some money aside, to make sure you're liquid in case you need, um, you know, to cover healthcare expenses. Maybe it's buying a new car. Maybe it's just if you were to get sick, um, you can take some time off of work. But keeping a good chunk of money aside, I think, is really important. So some possibilities include, you know, supporting family members during emergencies, major repairs or home improvement necessities. Um, more and more often, I'm seeing that you're working so much towards the end of retirement, you're just tired, the weekend, you just want to relax, and all you're doing is thinking about how many days you have left on the clock until you can leave work. And so you may not have, um, keep, you may not have been keeping your home improvement necessities up. So new roofs, new paint, carpet, you know, upkeep, all those type of things. Um, those really, you should be building a cash reserve aside for when those come up. Um, I think that's really important. And then uh, resources to help in, with an unexpected illness or death, um, potential long-term care needs. Keep in mind, average long-term care costs are between forty dollars and 92000 per year if you were to enter a long-term care facility. So buying long-term care insurance could be one way to protect against that. There are also hybrid plans um, that have a, a life insurance and long-term care built into the same plan where if you pass away and you don't use a long-term care, well, then you get a life insurance payout. But if you do need long-term care, then that policy converts into a long-term care policy. They're a little more expensive, but the flexibility can be can be good. So putting some some money aside for buying things like that um, it could be really important. And you know, other things like other life transitions, like if you want to start a business, sometimes starting a business can be capital intensive. And so having some cash put aside to cover that when it's time, um, I think is really important as well. So um, determining the four L's of retirement income planning really will help you guide your life plan in relation to your financial goals and your personal wealth goals. So once you prioritize your goals, then you can assess and prioritize the tactics for your retirement plan to best meet the goals and manage the risks. So um, really you have to start somewhere, right? So I think it's really important to lay out everything that you'd want to do if you can do it. And then from there, we back in with the amount of assets and income that you have to help you plan and achieve every one of those goals on a reasonable time frame. And then from there, actually put them on a calendar based on cash flow and based on withdrawal strategy we're going to use from your retirement accounts to make sure that you're hitting all the goals in a reasonable time um, so that you know they actually happen during your lifetime. So your investments are a really, really big part of your retirement income plan, but it is a whole tapestry that you need to be weaving. So um, income and uh, investment planning is a huge portion. And um, you know, I think this is something that a lot of people need help with on what to take out from which account, in what order, 
to keep your taxes the lowest possible, to qualify for subsidies so you can keep your healthcare costs down. There really is an art to this, right? And maybe some of you want to spend the time and figure it all out yourself. Um, but in reality, I think that if this is not your specialty, you should get help because this is something I do on a daily basis, weekly basis. So whether it's for me or somebody else that you trust um, that you want to get help with, I think getting some professional help, um, putting together your income uh, plan, your retirement income plan, I should say, to make sure that you're taking um, the most uh, you know, the, the best approach to retirement planning. So you keep the most of your money and you keep the government's hands off of it is really, really important. So it's, I've, I easily can see you returning two, three or four times, whatever you pay for help on this. So I, I think it's uh, something you should definitely do. So if you would like help determining your full elder retirement with your income planning, with your retirement planning, then that's something I'm definitely here to help you out with if you need help with that. So if something you're interested in, uh, again, I am, uh, having very limited appointments this week because I am going to be leaving out of town for a couple weeks, but we can definitely get some folks on the calendar to get you helped out. So if you would like help with this, you can go to KIS, like keep it simple, planning.com forward slash apply and schedule a time that works for you. Um, I'm happy to work that out with you and spend about 45 minutes to an hour working on your retirement strategy. These calls are complimentary and I try to deliver a ton of value to you so that you can see all the things that you should be considering when it comes to planning for a confident retirement. So um, once again, I'm here to help with you, uh, help you out if you need things like that. And that's pretty much what I have for you today. So I'm going to check for questions here. So Mary Lou asks here, let me get this off my screen real quick and go back here and I'm going to put this up with my face on it. So if you need help, you can go to this website here. But so Mary Lou asks, how much do you think we should keep liquid? So um, there's a general idea that keeping three to six months or even nine months or a year is a good way to keep it liquid. Um, I really would like, to, like for you to plan out buckets for different um, periods, right? And when it comes to retirement. So say so keeping a, a year of expenses, very liquid and very easy to access in retirement. Um, I think that is a, is a great place to start. Um, then maybe years two and three, you um, maybe go a little bit more um, risk in a sense, not risky, but things that are going to return you two, three or 4% of income. And whether that's through um, you know treasury bonds or getting bond funds or whatever it may be, but you need to keep up with inflation at a minimum with all of this money, and then from there keep some other assets set aside for years five to five to seven, seven to ten, and then ten plus years. Really breaking up those buckets so that you're not only keeping up but you're also beating inflation. But then you have the assets and the liquid funds available if something were to come up. But at a minimum, at least three months to six months. In, you know, in cash or cash equivalents that can be accessed within a few hours or less if you needed them is really important. So great question though. And that's the only question I'm seeing here today. So um, if you watch this at a later time, feel free to drop questions down below. I typically can respond um, for, um, me immediately to you to try to help you out. If you need anything at all, please set up an appointment with me. I'd love to chat with you about helping you plan a confident retirement. Once again, these are complimentary calls, but I do know so many folks just don't have anywhere to go and I would love to be that resource for you and this group being another resource. So if you have questions, ask them in the group. Um, you'll get a lot of feedback and a lot of help from other folks in a very similar situation. And that's the benefit of being in this group. But uh, I want to say I appreciate you all showing up today. Um, if you need anything at all from me, go ahead and leave me, a, leave me a comment or a question and we'll be talking very soon. Other than that, have a great week and we'll be talking at least next week, maybe a little bit earlier. I got, might have a surprise for you this week. All right. Have a good one, guys. Talk soon. Bye-bye.